Good morning. This lesson is from our Trig Pre-Calc class. But before I get started, I want to say I hope everyone is doing all right out there. I actually do know the title of this lesson. It's Chapter 6, Lesson 1, Good for Me. And I also know our three goals, so let's go ahead and look at them. Our first goal is going to be to use a sine function on an acute triangle. Our second goal is going to be to create the law of sines. And our third goal is going to, use, going to be to use the law of sines to solve an acute triangle. Key idea for this lesson. I'll translate it for you. Put a trig function on a non-right triangle. We can't do it. So let me let me explain why we can't do it. All right, so my review here, sine of theta is equal to an opposite length over a hypotenuse length. Hypotenuse lengths only happen on right triangles. No hypotenuse, no sine function. All right, so let's be talking about an acute triangle here. Acute triangles have three acute angles, which means no right angle, which means no hypotenuse. So we cannot use a sine function here. I can't put a sine function on an acute triangle. There's no hypotenuse because there's no right angle. However, we can turn one acute triangle into two right triangles. So let's look at an example here of an acute triangle. Triangle ABC is acute, right? Here's angle A, here's angle C, here's angle B. They're all between zero and 90 degrees. The opposite length of angle A is, the opposite length of angle A is side A. The opposite length of angle B is length B. And the opposite length of uh, angle C is length C. I should say this one correct. The opposite length of angle, the opposite, the opposite, I can't talk. The length opposite angle A is A. Okay, there we go. I made it. I did it. Okay. So we can construct a segment from any angle to its opposite side so that the segment is perpendicular to the opposite side. Basically, I'm saying I can make a right angle from any angle to its opposite side. An example of this, I'm going to, I'm going to create a segment from angle A to side BC so that it will be perpendicular to side BC. So if I drop down a segment like this, um, I can actually build a, a, a segment that would be perpendicular, but for the sake of time and, um, and clarity of the picture, I'm going to skip that step. All right, so from angle A to side BC, I made a segment that is perpendicular. We're gonna call the intersection point D. So let me label that as point D. And now we have two right triangles. So we can write the sine function for angle B and angle C. So I can write the sine function for this angle, and I can write the sine function for this angle. So for, uh, for angle B, this is the right triangle I'm gonna be working with. And for angle C, this is the right triangle I'm gonna be working with. All right. We exclude angle A for now because it is not a full angle. I don't want to worry about this angle yet because it's cut up into two pieces. So let me uh, write our sine functions for what we can do. And I would like to find a marker that would work. So my markers, I'm running low on markers here. Um, so let's write the uh, sine function for angle B. So sine of angle B is equal to the opposite length so from angle B, this is the opposite length of that right triangle, right? So it's going to be the length of AB, or AD, sorry, divided by the hypotenuse for that, that right triangle, which is the length C. And I'd also like to write the uh, sine function for angle C. So sine of C, sine of angle C, sorry, is equal to its opposite length, which is, again is length AD. And that's divided by the hypotenuse for this little right triangle, which is length B. All right. Now notice both equations have something that's the same in both of them, and we're going to exploit this shortly. So let me go ahead and erase the board. I'd like to um, create a sine function for angle A. So I'm going to draw a segment off of a different angle and then do what I did prior. And uh, again, we're gonna have something in common. And from there, we're gonna be able to jump into our second goal, which will be create the law of sine. So let me erase all of this and I'll be back. I'm back. All right, let's continue with our first goal. So I just wanna remind you what we created. We created that the sine of angle B is equal to the length AD divided by C and the sine of angle C is equal to the length of AD divided by B. 
All right, so let's create sine of angle A by creating a perpendicular segment from angle B to side AC. So we're gonna make a segment that goes perpendicular to this. And uh, we'll be able to write sine of angle A as well as sine, sine of angle C again. So let's go ahead and do that email. Um, let's see here. So from B, I believe, you know, this is a rough approximation. If I was doing this properly, I would use a compass and straight edge. But for the sake of a clear, uh, clear picture, I'm not going to do that. All right, so it's going to intersect at point E. Oh, I forgot to say that, so that's okay, but we'll add that. So it's going to intersect at point E. Um, and let's go ahead and write this. So sine of angle A. is equal to the opposite length, so that's the length of BE divided by the hypotenuse of that right triangle, so that's uh, length of C, and sine of angle C is going to be equal to the opposite length, and again, that's length of BE divided by the hypotenuse for this little triangle, and that's the length A. Okay, so again, um, our first goal was to uh, use, find, use the sine function on an acute angle, and I have sine functions on all the angles for the acute triangle, so I'm going to check off my first goal, and now I'm going to move into my second goal, which is to create the law of sines, and so what we're going to do is we're going to get a little creative with the, the two sets of equations we have. Um, we have this set right here, and we have this set right here. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I knew what the sign, the law of signs was before I started this lesson, but I never figured out where it came from. So, like I mentioned before when I would do homework, where I would bridge the answer to the, the question and figure out the way to go from um, combine them, I did that with this, but hopefully it makes sense to you what, uh, what's going on here. So let's start off with our first set of equations, um, sine of angle B. Uh, is equal to AD, the length AD over C, and sine of angle C, again, equal to the length AD over B. Now, what both of these have in the equation and what we're going to exploit is both of these have the same length in here, right? So if we're able to solve for uh, the length AD, then we can do a transitive substitution and, and, and get sine of B and sine of C to be in the same equation. So we're going to solve for uh, length AD. So since both equations... have the length of AD in them. So since both equations have the length AD in them, we will solve for the length AD and use the transitive property to get sine of B and sine of C into the same equation. So if I wanted to solve for this, it's really easy to do. Not a C, it's a B. Come on. It's really easy to do. I multiply both sides by C. And the C's cancel on this side, and I'm left with, and I'm going to split this, but I'm left with, uh, actually it doesn't matter, 
C times the sine of angle B is equal to the length AB. And if I do the same for this second equation, and multiply both sides by B, they cancel on the right side, and I'm left with B times sine C equal to the length of AD. Now, if two things are equal to the same thing, those two things themselves must be equal. So, by the transitive property, and I'm going to try my best to stay on the, the whiteboard, um, C times sine of B is equal to B times sine of C. Let me make sure that I'm still on here. Oh, just barely, okay. Now, let's divide both sides by C, and let's divide both sides by B, okay? Now, again, like I said, I know what the answer is supposed to be, and I bridged it together. Let's cancel out what we can. On the left side, the C's cancel, and on the right side, the B's cancel, and I'm left with sine of B, divided by length B is equal to sine of C divided by length C. So I'm running out of room. I'm going to need to come back and, and erase this and give myself some room to do the same thing to these sets of equations. Um, so let me cl uh, clean off the board and I'll be back. I'm back. So let's go ahead and continue our second goal. Um, I wanted to just Reiterate that we know that sine of angle B divided by B is equal to sine of angle C divided by angle C. So now I'd like to get sine of angle A and sine of angle C together in the same equation like we did with sine of angle B and sine of angle C. So I have uh, the second set of equations that were created from the, the, uh, the segment coming off of angle B to side AC. Again, notice that both of these equations have something in common and we're going to exploit that fact so if I can get um, the length of BE by itself then I can use a transitive property like before and bring uh, sine of A and sine of C together and let's just go ahead and do that so um, I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, length C so you get a C and you get a C that cancels and C times sine of angle A is equal to the length of segment BE. Uh, I'm going to do that as well over here. I'm going to multiply both sides by A. So you get an A and you get an A. You cancel and length A times sine of angle C is equal to the length of segment BE again. So now we're in transitive. Remember, if two things equal a third thing, those two things must be equal. So let me write that out because I haven't written that out yet. So if two things equal a third, then those two things are equal. This is a transitive property. And um, I'm not sure things are a very mathematical term, but I'm going to use it. All right. Don't tell the math police. All right. So um, length C times sine of A and length A times sine of C, they're both equal to the length BE. So two things are equal to a third. So by the transitive property, I can say now that C times sine of angle A must be equal to A times sine of angle C. So like before, I'm going to divide everybody by uh, the, the, the lengths attached to the sine functions. So I'll divide everybody by C and A, length C and length A. And I'll cancel out who I can on either side. So on the first side, the C's cancel. And on the second side, the A's cancel. And I'm now left with sine of A 
divided by length of A, length of side A is equal to sine of C divided by length of C, right? But guess what we have again? We have the transitive property. Because sine of angle A divided by A and sine of angle B divided by B, they're both equal to sine of C. So then that must mean by transitive property that sine of angle B divided by B must also equal to sine of angle A divided by A. Now, what we see with the law of sines is we just see everybody in the same equation. So they say this, sine of angle A divided by A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by B, and that's equal to, that's a terrible B that looks like a five, um, and that's equal to sine of angle C divided by length of C, right? So this is the law of sines. And remember the key idea is to put a trig function on a non-right triangle. And so if we see an acute triangle We can write the following. Sine of angle A divided by its opposite length equals to sine of angle B divided by its opposite length and sine of angle C divided by its opposite length. So, I'm going to go ahead and erase all this. I'm going to show you how we use this. Now, this is not the end of the story for acute triangles. There's more, but I, again, I want to make it into a story. So let's understand the basics with, uh, with this, with this uh, equation that we have, the law of sines, and then we'll build some more complicated problems. But again, I wanted to show you where it came from and, and how it was created. And again, I wanted to put a trig function on a non-right triangle. And we did that. So let me go ahead and erase everything. I'll be back for the last time, I promise. I'll be back. I'm back for the last time, I promise. We're going to do our third goal, which is to use the law of sines to solve the acute triangle. Um, so what I did was I wrote down the steps to solve a triangle using the law of sines. And our first step is to find a third angle value if possible. We have to know two angles in order to do this. Step one and a half, I didn't want to erase everything, but step one and a half, label the sides A, B, and C. Step two, plug in the known values into the law of sines. Step three, solve equations with one, un with one unknown only. Step four, use answers from step three to create more equations with one unknown. And then um, to remind you what it means to solve a triangle, it means to find all the angle measures and all the side lengths. So I'd like us to solve the triangle. And remember, um, let's go through the steps here. So I'll just list them off to the side. Step one, step one and a half, step two, step three, step four. Um, let's see here. So step one, can I find a third angle value if possible? Yes, I can. I can do step one because I know two angles, right? So if I know two angles, I can do uh, step one. So what I know about a triangle is the three angles add to about 180. So three angles add to 180 degrees, and I have two angles that add up to 105, so to get to 180 degrees, that means that my angle B must be 75 degrees. All right. So now I need to label the sides A, B, and C. Opposite side or opposite angle A is uh, side length A. Opposite angle C is side length C. And opposite angle B is side length B. And I want you to label these so you know how to plug into the formula, right? So we're going to plug known values into the law of sine. So I did step, uh, step one and a half. I'm going to do step two, plug known values into the law of sines. Remember, law of sines is... Sine of angle A divided by length of angle A equals 
sine of angle B divided by length of angle B and sine of angle C um, divided by length of C. So all three of these fractions are equal and let's plug in what we can. Uh, I know angle A, so I'm going to now have sine of 40 degrees. I do not know length A, so I'm going to have to leave that as A. Um, I know angle B, that is sine of 75 degrees. I also know the length of B, so that's 33. And I know the angle C, that's 65, so I can say sine of 65 degrees. And I do not know the length of C, so I'm going to leave that the length of C. Now, what I mean by step three, let me check off step two. Um, what I mean by step three is solve equations with one, uh, one unknown only. So if I was to cover up that, this would be an equation I can solve because my only unknown is A. Um, so that's a solvable equation. Now, if I was to cover up this and I was left with sine of 40 over A equals sine of 65 over C, I can't solve that. This is a bad equation because I have two unknowns. So I have to make sure I only have one unknown. And so I can solve this, these, this equation with these two guys, and I can also solve this equation with these two guys. And I would find my value of C on this one. So let's find the value of A, and then um, we'll come back and find the value of C. So sine of 40 degrees divided by A equals to sine of 75 divided by 33. Okay, so let's get rid of fractions first. And remember, the way we get rid of fractions is we multiply by a denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 33. And I'm going to multiply both sides by A. Okay, and let's see what we get here. So on the left side, my A's cancel. On the right side, my 33's cancel. And so now I'm left with 33... times sine of 40 degrees, and that's equal to sine of 75 degrees times A. I almost have the value of A by itself, and it's really easy to do. I divide away the sine of 75 degrees to both sides. And the value of A, the length of side A, is going to be 33 times sine of 40 divided by sine of 75. So let me uh, get a calculator machine and plug this in. Make sure it's on degrees and not radians. So 33 times sine of 40. Let me make sure I close that. Divided by sine of 75, and that's going to equal 21.96. So A is roughly 21.96. If I round that to the nearest tenth, that rounds that up to a 10, and that carries over to that. So we'll say that A is roughly 22 units long. All right, and uh, I can't plug this value in. I can't do step four because I can find the value of C without using A, all right? So you might need to do that um, if you don't know an angle and a side. You will need to do that if you don't know an angle and a side. Let me, let me clarify that. All right, so we found A. Let's come back and find C. Okay, so my equation for C is going to be these two guys. Um, I get sine of 75 degrees divided by 33, and that equals sine of 65 degrees divided by C, okay. So again, uh, let's get rid of all the denominators at once. I multiply everybody by 33, and I multiply everybody by C. So on the left, the 33s cancel, and on the right, the Cs cancel. And I'm now left with C times sine of 75 equals 
sine 65 times 33. Again, I need to divide away a value. So let's divide away the sine of 75. Let me learn how to write a seven. And I really hope that I'm on the whiteboard. Let me double check before I go any farther because I've had a habit of doing this lately. Oh, I am just barely on there. Okay, I'll make sure I work more to the left. All right, so this cancels out and the length of C is equal to sine of 65 degrees times 33 divided by the sine of 75 degrees. So again, I'm gonna put this into my calculator machine. Let's see here. So on sine of 65 times 33 divided by sine of 75, and that's equal to 30.96. So C is roughly 30. 0.96. If I round this to the nearest tenth, that becomes a 10. That carries to 1. So the value of C is roughly 31. All right. So I found all the angles. I found all the side lengths. So that means that I solved my triangle. And um, hopefully this explains to you how to um, use the law of signs for now. There's going to be a bit more about the law of signs, but again, I wanted to show you where the formula came from. So I'm going to end it here. Again, I hope everyone is doing all right out there. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.